obviously we didn't win today, but we were we're even more confident now that we have what it takes to compete with the top teams because. I'm joined with Pinkard after an unfortunate 2-0. Uh, Pinkard, level, the level one game two obviously didn't go your way, and it's very difficult to come back from a game like that. I do want to just sort of delve into the mind of the players. When something like that happens, where do you go from there? Like, what sort of plans do you put in place to recover from something like that? Yeah, it's definitely hard after that. I mean, Ezo got the first three kills, but mid and top lane should still be fine. So it is really important to just make a strong plan of what we need to do. And I don't think we really did that. We kind of felt pressured to go for to go for like super plays ourselves. And that's why like Palafox jumped in, tried to kill the Lucian under turret. When it's important to just stay calm, uh, use our advantages, which are strong mid, strong top, and try to use that to like get grub, still play the game out normally and Hopefully, at some point, catch out as we don't get a shutdown. Um, but it's not easy. And uh, yeah, we obviously didn't do it well this time around. You guys are uh, two and three right now. And I'm just a little bit curious about the, the pressure on the team because obviously, you didn't get the results you wanted last split. This split seems very, very shaky. Um, what for a team that puts sets such high standards for themselves? How is the vibe and the atmosphere and sort of the, the pressure accumulation on you guys right now? Yeah, I don't think we're honestly super stressed or, or super, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Um, just because it is clear, at least from our end, that we are improving. Like our first game against C9, we honestly probably should have won. We were pretty, pretty in a really good spot with like a very good team fighting competition. And we got through the hard parts of the game. And then game two, we just, we were so far behind early. And those games are a lot harder. So I don't think like we're, putting a lot of pressure on ourselves because we still we still see that improvement but we're definitely stressed like there's definitely some frustrations from uh, uh, every now and then among the team but i do think the team is going in a good direction and we are kind of finding that balance that we need in practice to be able to get like productive days of practice and improve um even after today we were we're on it, like obviously we didn't win today, but we were we're even more confident now that we have what it takes to compete with the top teams because from our perspective, we don't think Cloud9 was that good today. And they are supposed to be one of the strongest teams in the league. So we're confident in ourselves. We just need to get to where we want to be. At the end of game one, FBI didn't flash like the Azir shuffle, and that kind of led to the whole thing with the Baron happening and them finishing the game. And Jojo, I think, uh, messaged him and was like, well, you don't you can't flash. And he's like, no, I can't. Does do things like that where like such a big mistake that might sort of end the game. Does that affect the players to the point where they might perform worse the next game or, uh, you know, just their uh, their mental? I think FBI is pretty rock solid in terms of mental. So, I mean, earlier Jojo made a mistake and FBI wasn't the one who typed Jojo question mark when Azir just killed himself in top river. So. Jojo was kind of just poking him back after that. They kind of had that relationship. Um, I think some players for sure, but FBI is, he's, he's a mental rock. Uh, he, he's not affected by that. All right. I got, we didn't see the, the question mark that he sent, so that makes a little more sense. Um, moving forward, you guys also have to play Team Liquid. You haven't played them yet. What sort of prep do you do to a team that seems like it's you know a tier above. Is it more? Hey, let's scout them out. Let's try to figure out how to like uh, where there there are holes in their armor, or is it like how do we polish our weapons? Definitely a mix of both. I think what makes us a good team and just having like what makes our coaching staff very strong as well is we are very good at pinpointing what enemy teams don't want to play against and uh, going against like TL. Even today, going against C nine, we prep like these Vi Rumble Vi Cannon uh, compositions. Uh, which we haven't shown before. So it's just important to have like new compositions that you think are strong, that you think are going to be effective against the enemy team, and be able to play those in a very polished way. Um, so that's kind of like the extra prep you have to do to beat one of the best teams. When you're, against, when you're playing against you know one of the bottom teams, you can focus on yourself a lot more and really polish out like your fundamentals leading into that series because you don't have to be as creative to get yourself an advantage. I actually want to ask a little bit more about champion pools uh, and sort of compositions that maybe you haven't seen. A big, um, I guess, LS has often been talking about how certain champions might be very good in certain situations, but the pro players will come back, I'm not practicing on that, I can't pull that out on stage. 
and it breaks the, the question of like, if you're a professional player, how many champions should you have in your arsenal? And uh, a big, you know, so proponent of like, master your four or five champions because you're playing it at the highest level. Uh, we've heard a lot of pros say that. And so when you try to expand and, you know, maybe play these different compositions with picks that you haven't before, does that take away from, you know, mastering fundamentals and trying to have, you know, the most polished uh, gameplay? Or does that give you an extra, I guess it's a give and take, like it gives you another extra weapon that you can use that they not might not be prepared for, but you're not as polished. It's like, where do you guys stand on that? Every player is different. Um, you take someone like Bjergsen and there are some seasons where you had like, you know, 12 champions played. Uh, but then you take other players and they will just like stick to their three to four to five champions like impact and he will kind of just play those because he thinks those are the strongest ones at the moment. Um, obviously, having a very big champion pool is an advantage. But as you said, when you are learning a new champion and you are kind of figuring out how to play it, uh, for the most part, you are going to make, you know, more mid game mistakes, more skirmish mistakes, more early game laning mistakes. And so it does come at the sacrifice of some other aspects of your play. Um, so it really depends on the player because some players, they are very quick in learning that aspect and just kind of like taking what the champion can do and applying it to different parts in the game. But other, ch other players, they, they take more time. And so it is a kind of having that balance and kind of understanding what strengths and weaknesses uh, your players have and using that to kind of determine how many, how many champions you can have mastered at a time. Uh, Aurora is the newest champion. She's disabled this week, but I think next week you guys can play her. Um, you know, just in a general sense, do you feel like she's a pro-ready champion or might just be more of a soul queue beast? It's a little bit hard to say. I will, like, judging by just solo queue win rates, it does have one of the highest win rates of any, like, release champion in a long time. Um, usually champions have, like, a, you know, 45% win rate, stuff like that, after it balances out and then they buff it and then it, like, it goes really high and then people are still learning the champion, so it gets even higher and then, like, the champion's super mega OP. But Aurora right now has like a 53, 52% win rate, and it's still climbing, which makes me think that the champion probably is super busted. Um, I'm not sure it has a place in competitive, but it definitely is strong, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it pop up this next weekend. All right. Out of curiosity, do you still play the game? Yeah, I play the game a ton. Oh, really? Uh, there was this discussion about Jojo Pune playing ARAMs to, to get better at team fighting. Yeah, what are your. That. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something... I think Masu was saying he doesn't actually think there's much merit in that. I think it depends how you approach it. Like, if you actually approach all the ARAM team fights, thinking like, okay, how can I play this the best as possible? Um, I have to wait for this guy to go in and then I can do something. Like, if you think about it that way, it can. I think most people, when they play ARAM, they do it to blow off steam and they're probably not playing accordingly. Um, so, the same way it is with solo queue, ARAMs, whatever you do, as long as you actually have certain certain things you want to practice while you're spending your time doing it. It can be helpful. And if JoJo's actually going into it and paying close attention to how can I play this the best I can, then it probably is helpful because you will be team fighting more than in solo queue. Um, but it is easy to kind of waste a lot of time playing ARAMs if you aren't trying really hard to improve those values. All right. My last question is more about uh, NRG. Do you guys have any you know, team activities that you do regularly, like even if it's like once a month or something, some sort of team building thing? I will go out to dinner every once in a while. I know who he invites a bunch of his teammates over for board games and stuff. Uh, at this point, we have some like pretty mature and older players. So they're good at kind of facil facilitating that uh, team bonding themselves. Uh, usually with the younger teams, you have to plan out like a bunch of team, team activities to do to make sure they're hanging out with each other and building that type of bond. Um, so with energy, we don't have to do that as much. Uh, like two to three years ago, we definitely had to force that because, you know, we had much younger players. But nowadays, uh, not as much. We mostly just get food every once in a while. All right. Well, uh, I want to say good luck to energy, but I'm a Shopify fan. And uh, as long as you guys keep losing, we still have hope. So I might not say anything, but uh, yeah, good luck to you, Thinkard. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. To be honest... I'm not entirely convinced with everything he said, but hey, if he said it, uh, if that's what he believes, um, if I were NRG, I'd be a little worried, but maybe not necessarily making playoffs, but ideally you make it to Worlds, right? And you want to put a good showing, and it doesn't seem like the team is really showing that, at least as a fan. Um, but yeah, who knows? 
Uh, the other thing I'm excited for is Aurora. Hopefully we don't see a bunch of bands and we can actually see her being played, maybe even by Shopify, because, you know, they play a lot of cool things. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be really cool. I think she's a, she's a new champion and it's always exciting to see new things pop up and uh, see where the meta is heading. Uh, the patch just came out, so came out yesterday. Uh, I'm excited for next week's games. We play against FlyQuest. It's not going to be easy, that's for sure, but there are some really cool matchups. Saturday is, like, extremely important to the standings. Depending on who wins, we might have, like, a very good chance of making it to playoffs or a very slim chance of making it to playoffs, depending on who wins. So, uh, Foldy Sheet will be there as well. Um, I saw it on Twitter. Uh, I don't know if, like, LCS will be using it this week or next week, but... I'm I'm excited for the games. Uh, things are heating up with the playoff race and the top of the table race. There's two races that are like, there. It's actually uh, it's actually entertaining. Like uh, there there were some some really like snooze fests, uh, especially like Team Liquid destroying Immortals and whatnot. But uh, I think the next couple of weeks are about to be fun.